Hi, my name is Ben Beatty Hood, and welcome to my talk on structured event storming. Event storming is a workshop process for discovering domains, data flows, actors, and stakeholders. Event modeling builds on event storming's multi-input workshop approach and collects additional data on the events regarding their cause and connections, as well as tries to capture the interaction of events between domains. The problem I find with both these methods is that the result usually looks like this. It's not bad, and everyone has tried to work together to put their concept of the business into a single flow. But while it's a great effort, because they are physically based, the prompts for input are not rigorous. People can either overlap ideas physically or be prompted to fill empty wall space. And this can undermine checking you've actually got the requirements. The outcome is also physically bounded and is called complete either when the boss says so or when the team has just run out of stamina. And there's no testing process to check you've sufficiently explored the domain or clear boundaries where you should focus the exploration. The resulting wall is usually then passed directly to the product team as a form of specification for what is needed, with some sort of hand waving around, we need you to build something for this. The problem is that the results include large gaps, especially around where the process becomes more technical. And because of these gaps, the systems that get designed for these flows can be more oriented towards CRUD operations than business ones. So this is where structured event storming takes the great domain-oriented basis of event storming but protects against gaps and has the side effect of translating directly to technical implementation, so there's less guesswork. As a developer, you are unlikely to be directly in a target domain, and so you'll usually hear of the problem from the stakeholders. And when they describe the problem, they'll usually explain a flow around it. The first step is to capture this. I'll use a flowchart annotation here because I'm doing this as a video, but in practice, just use whatever annotation becomes easiest to you. This is important because the annotation style you use will surface the way that you think about the problem, and this will be important to the way that you share it back to the stakeholder. For our process, we'll use the problem of a shopping cart checkout. Our stakeholders will have an existing website that they want to improve the shopping cart checkout process for. So we identify the domain and they describe roughly what they want to us and we draw it. Now let's zoom into each step and see what makes up each one that relates to our problem domain. First, the find product step. As we consider this, we can see that although finding a product is an input to our problem domain, it's actually a separate domain to the domain we're trying to solve. So this is the first important practice with structured event storming, one that differentiates it from classic event storming. Delineate early what is and isn't part of your intended solution domain. You will have a limited amount of time and effort, and so you focus these only on the things you need done. This is the first way that structured event storming keeps us focused on exploring the problem and ensures we are spending our effort in the most effective way. Delineate the problem domain so we know that we don't want detail before this point. We'll keep it as part of our diagram, but cross it out for now to be sure that we don't try to add data to this area. How about the next one? Because the product now begins to interact with the basket, we can say that yes, our problem domain does include this part. Can we break this step down then into individual pieces? If I just move the excluded step over a bit, we can break that step down into a cycle like this. These are part of our problem domain, so we'll keep them. How about the checkout step? It too is definitely part of the problem domain, so let's break it down too. Using the domain boundaries to choose when to explore more detail, our focus on this area has uncovered a lot more steps than we first thought. We can and should keep drilling down into these steps, so long as they are bounded by our problem domain. Expanding this step shows that there's an inefficiency here. We need their billing and shipping addresses, but let's add another lens. Who is being served by each step? Applying a quick product lens on the detail we're discovering using structured event storming, we can see the gap doesn't serve the customer, and because they're the ones we rely on to complete this process, we need to improve this section. Let's add in a shortcut to let the domain user, in this case the customer, skip some of these steps not well designed for their experience. Using structured event storming to model the flow, we've been able to improve the discovered steps to ensure our domain user is front and center in the steps designed and never considered a consumer, but instead a driver of the process. This process of drilling into the diagram hasn't exposed the events yet, but we will get to it. The first stage is to really make sure that we're understanding the domain 
And unlike just using a physical wall space, we're not bounded or prompted by gaps, but instead are prompted by the ideas. We're using the diagrams to capture the ideas so that we can check with our domain experts that we have understood the domain. So let's keep drilling in. But how do we know when we've drilled in far enough and covered all the areas? Let's bring in another tool of structured event storming, categorization. Let's categorize these steps as inputs, outputs, third-party interop, and multi-step interactions to see where the complexity remains. And where this complexity is, we'll continue to drill down. It looks like we've found now where we need to dig deeper. The step we had as pay via credit card or PayPal is a complex multi-step third-party interaction where the user chooses their payment method either logs in or otherwise fills out their details, would be validated, and then would commit to the payment. And you can usually spot these a mile away, where the step includes bracketed information and conditional items like and or, or if. So let's expand this one now too. Wow, that's a lot of steps. We need to include credit card entry, validation, payment confirmation or failure. And in fact, PayPal also has these steps for login, password reminder, shipping address selection, etc. So do we need to continue detailing these two? The answer in this case is no. These steps are already provided for by the third party user experience and are locked in. We can't change them. And so in this case, they remain part of our problem domain, but we're highlighting them differently to show that we've decided to simplify their interactions, and not drill down further. And now what about this last step? Do we need to go into more detail here? Fortunately, we can refer back to our problem domain again the checkout process. And so it doesn't include any aspects like refunds, parcel tracking, feedback, etc. Being clear on where the problem domain starts and stops allows us to focus our time on understanding and testing that we've understood the problem without wasting effort detailing areas outside it. So here's our final process flow. And at this point, we'd get a thorough confirmation of the flow from all the stakeholders and also check it against the actors involved. We'd run some product testing against some customers, for example perhaps by using a manual backend, checking that we've actually covered all of the process points. And so here we have two of the fundamental differences between structured event storming and traditional event storming or event modeling. The ability to constrain focus to your problem domain and then test the artifact at this state. Next comes the third fundamental difference from these two methods, translation to solution. We know that any problem or design that goes through extensive translation to become a solution loses fidelity and in this way introduces bugs, interpretations, caveats, essentially divergence from the domain stakeholders and the solution providers. And so in structured event storming, we use this grid to extract the pieces from our domain flow. Working from top to bottom, the first step requires the user to add a product to their basket. So we'll need them to input their choice of product and we'll use a session wide basket. The two things we need to know, we can flag, here I've added them in bold. Next, to display the basket, we'll need an output that'll include the products added, their quantity and current prices, and a total. In contrast, this one is for the user to confirm, so we don't need any additional solution components. Same here, and because this is a process outside of our domain, we can ignore its inputs. And so we move through the system. Some steps will also deliberately not store data because the domain security limitations exclude it. Passwords, credit card info, etc. can be considered this way. Great, now we've extracted the solution into our structured event storming grid. What next? Well, we're going to need a little bit more space, so let's spread out a bit. In the next part, we'll assume that you know about CQRS as a solution approach, where you separate your commands from your events and queries. This is a very common pattern for distributed systems. And if you're attending this talk on event storming, I'm going to assume that you're interested in events, and so that you're interested in distributed systems. Now, structured event storming allows you to take your extracted solution grid like this and translate it directly to CQRS. You simply rename your inputs as commands, your validation list becomes your command validation methods, your data becomes your events, and your outputs are your read store API responses. Then the layout itself can translate directly, quadrant by quadrant, to become your event sourced final solution design. And this is the final benefit of structured event storming. The output extracted solution grid is translated directly into the solution. 
And this approach means that there is no interpretation when moving from your tested event set to your final solution, which means fewer domain related bugs, which are much harder to unpick than technical ones when you are building your evented system. In conclusion, this rigorous, more structured approach to event storming focuses your domain expert's input on the problem domain, allows you to include remote domain experts, makes it easier to identify when something is in or out of scope, leaves less chance for missing detail as you can use the flow diagram to check coverage more easily with related stakeholders. And the final extracted grid of commands, validation, events, and outputs maps directly to a CQRS design leaving very little chance for interpretation or error when building the solution. That's it for this talk. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it.